Hi everyone, for this tutorial we are going to take a look at creating a princess or a fairy costume. Now the basis of this one is using a simple tank top. So you can find that tank top pattern in the Summer in Paris combination. Um, it's also the slip version that goes under the Wumera dress or we have the slip pattern on its own. So you can use that basic tank top. You can also use the free tank top pattern, free t-shirt pattern to create the same type of idea. We're simply using the upper part of the t-shirt or the tank top and adding tulle um, or chiffon or any type of flowy gathered ruffle to create the skirt and then simple embellishments that can pull it all together to give it a princess look. And then of course you're going to want to add your own embellishments for a crown, a mask, wings. We have some simple tutorials and there are some great detailed patterns available to you on Pixie Fair. And if you're trying to do these types of techniques for a little girl, I encourage you to look around. There are tons of resources for creating these types of things in different sizes if you're looking for a toddler um, or an older child. Uh, that you can find a variety of resources for masks and wings and embellishments to go along with the costume that you create. All right, let's jump on in and get started. Here are a few examples of the costumes that I'm gonna show you how to create using the tank top pattern. So you can see here we have several examples, a little bit of a different variation, but they've all created really cute little princess style costumes. Now in front of us right here, we have those examples laid out. So over here on the right, I have a blue tank top made from the Liberty Jane, the free tank top pattern. So this is already made, it's finished, and it's ready to go. Then I have some strips of a lightweight mesh glittery fabric that are cut to create the skirt. Then in the middle right here, we have a tank top made from the tank top that is featured in either the Summer in Paris top or um, as the slip for the pattern that goes with the Romero dress or the slip dress. So this is just the tank top portion. And then we have that also cut out, not sewn yet. So you can see here that these pieces are cut out as one piece and then we have fold over elastic to go and create the straps, which is very easy to do that, there's no hemming required. It makes putting that tank top together very easy and it's also a great addition if you're working with a fabric like this that is stretchy, it's a dance fabric, it's very sparkly and it's a little bit hard to sew through. So trying to hem this would be pretty problematic but if you cut this out in this format over here and then use fold over elastic for the neckline and the arms, you would have a very sparkly bodice for the tank top portion of these costumes. So if you can find this in different colors, this is a great resource. You just want to make sure that when you're sewing with this that you're using a ballpoint or a stretch needle so that you don't have any issue with sewing through this fabric. But generally when it's right sides together, it sews pretty easily. It's just trying to hem or sew from the top side that it has a little bit of trouble with the needle going through the fabric. Now for the skirt portions, I have three different examples here. This first one is very simple. You can watch the tutorial how to make this type of tutu um, in a separate video. It is strips of tulle that are cut and then trimmed down so that they're all eight inches long by two inches wide and we have a bunch of them. I've just cut strips following that other tutorial. So I have pink and white and I'm gonna alternate them on this ribbon to create a simple tutu skirt that we can just tie around the waist of one of these tank tops. So that right there would be the easiest version, the quickest, and then you can embellish and add fabric flowers or rows of beaded trim to the top of any tank top to really kind of add a little bit more sparkle to your princess design. Now these other skirts, the blue one and the pink ones, are cut five and a half inches in width. So I have a five and a half inch skirt length and then they are cut the width of the fabric. So most tulle or these kind of mesh dance fabrics come 56 inches wide. So I've just gone ahead and cut that the width of the fabric and I'm going to gather that to fit the waist of the tank top. So I have two layers I'm going to do on top of each other so that this is not see-through. I have a sparkly blue and I have this mesh blue. 
And then on the pink example, I have two versions of the skirt that we're gonna put together. We're gonna use the same t-shirt fabric as the underlayer, and then I have a very lightweight sparkly mesh which drapes really softly. That will show one example just so that you can see the difference compared to this and using traditional tulle, which is much stiffer. And then either skirt version we will attach to this simple tank top bodice. And then we will finish them off with trim and even some added embellishment. So you can see here we have a bunch of different trims. I have lots of sparkly silvers, some sequined, some ruffled lace, some little flowers that I could cut off. I can also use tool or mesh to create fabric flowers and apply those to these um, shirts as well to just finish off the look. And I thought I would just show you here sort of an inspiration look. This is a child's costume book. Um, easy kids costumes. It has lots of ideas. The basic Halloween costume pattern that we have with the ladybug and the pumpkin um, was inspired by what we saw in this book. So there's a lot in here if you're looking for a children's costume book. This is a great resource. It has a lot of cute costumes in it and this princess one is very simple. It's a very simple idea. She has a basic tank top on and then you create the mesh or tulle skirt and then you just add the embellishments that you create um, beyond that wings hair clips crown wand ballet shoes anything like that that really just finishes off your princess look and one quick thing I wanted to mention about the tank tops or the t-shirt they are all designed to have a three and a half inch finished side seam so from the underarm to the hem it's three and a half inches now the waist of the doll hits a little bit higher so for this example when we cut out the new version of this tank top you can see that we've cut this a little bit shorter. So if you look at the difference here, it's about an inch up from the finished hemline, which would be an inch and a half off the pattern itself. The pattern has a double turned quarter inch hem included in it. So when you cut out your tank top, whether it's the strappy version or the standard regular tank top or t-shirt, just keep that in mind. Trim off an inch and a half from the length so that you have a finished um, bodice area that comes down just to the waistline and that's where we'll attach the tool or the mesh ruffles. For the blue skirt we have two pieces cut the exact same length and width so they're both five and a half inches in length and they're 56 inches wide. I've gone ahead and sewn a basting stitch through both of them together. So I have a pretty long piece right here and I'm doing this flat because it's easier to do than to do this in the round, especially for such a small waistline on the doll. It's 11 inches. So we have 11 inches that we are working to go around this tank top idea. So I'm going to just gather this down and I've gone ahead and I've marked uh, with tape on my board right here 11 inches so that makes it very easy for me to work my way and start gathering my whole skirt until it fits in between these two marked lines. And I've started my gathering about a half inch in from the edge right here so that I can come in after I've done all the gathering and actually just sew up this center back seam so that it does have a clean finish on the back. But I find that it's easier to measure and even attach to the top um, as it's flat. If you haven't sewn your tank top yet and you haven't sewn your center back seam, then you could simply sew that in with the skirt all at one time and sew straight up the back but leaving the top open to add the hook and loop tape. But for this example, it's already sewn, so I'm simply going to continue to gather this so that it fits the top that I have. And now we're getting close to the measurement, so I'm just going to come in and pull those. I'll pin my ends and then I'll just work to really make sure that I have flat even gathering all along this waistline edge. Now I've taken the tank top and I've put it on the doll and marked with this design tape exactly where I wanna attach this skirt so that it hits more at her waistline. So I'm just using this as a guide right now. I will go in and I can trim this off and allowing for my seam allowance to just connect this to this, but at least I know where it is I want to attach this. I'm also just going to double check that my skirt is gathered the right amount. So if I was to put this here 
and fold these over and I could bring them at center back, I could still overlap and connect that and be able to spread out my gathers to fit around the edge of this bodice. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim this off just below this taped line. And then you're just gonna to wanna to be really careful at this point that you either go back in and reinforce your side seam right at the base so that it doesn't pull apart and the center back seam. You just come in and sew a quick little back stitch just to secure that on both sides. Now I'm gonna remove the tape and then I'm just going to set my bodice down and I'm going to pin this with right sides together all the way around. So I'll start to fit this on and checking that my gathers are even. I'm going to pin this all the way around. And then as I start to get close to center back, I'm just gonna leave it for the moment until I come around the other side and then I'll fit these two together exactly how I want them. Now here we are at center back. I have a little bit of extra, so this 56 inches is a little bit wide depending on just how much fabric you have and how stiff it is or how soft it is. Um, just getting it to lay flat would be the most important part. So if you have extra, it's fine to just pull those gathers apart a little bit and then you can work to um, just trim that off. But we've gone ahead and we're pinning this here and then this right here is gonna be my center back. So I'll have this side come in. And then right here, what I would wanna do is actually just meet these right in the middle. And I'm gonna pin them together right here. And I will take this over to my machine right now and just straight stitch down and trim off this excess. And then I will push it flat right here so that I can sew around this whole entire perimeter edge. So now I'm gonna run this through the machine, just fitting this right around my foot and I will sew this all the way in the round, all the way around. And here I am at the machine. I've actually gone ahead and turned this on the opposite side so that I could sew with the gathers up so that I can be sure that I have them evenly spaced and I don't have any areas like this where the ruffles themselves will fold down along that top cut edge. So as I'm sewing, I'm making sure that it's nice and tight. I'm sewing just past the 3 8 inch seam allowance. So as I sew, I'm trying to hold all of those gathers nice and tight and straight. But I'm also being careful not to stretch out that t-shirt itself because you want to have that retain its shape. So this is quite a bit of gathering, so I'm just working to make sure, again, that I have the ruffle evenly spaced right where the stitching is happening. All right, so we have this sewn down. You can see all the gathering is on the inside. This is the wrong side of the tank top. Now we have about a half inch seam allowance here, so you can decide. You can either go back in and zigzag this together just to help reduce that bulk. You could try to trim out some of this gathering. Um, but it is going to fit pretty loosely and we are going to add some embellishment to the outside. So the bulk there is okay um, and it will be minimized like I said. So we can finish that off but just to show you here once we turn this right side out you can see that that skirt portion hangs and is really cute. That's really full, it's really flowy, it's not gonna be see-through because it's so gathered. And again, we have two layers, we have solid mesh and sparkly mesh. So the best way for this to fit would be with that seam allowance pressed up. So you want the seam allowance up towards the bodice, not down, because that would look a little bit more um, awkward around the waistline but if it's pressed up and on the doll then at that point we can come in and we can add 
some sort of embellishment. So we have a lot of options and we can work to do anything that we want at this point. You could hand sew on just some sparkly cording. You could look for some ribbon that is um, has like a satin finish inside. It looks more a little bit more embroidered or crocheted. You could also find some flower trims and apply those right along that seam as well uh, with hand stitching or you could probably even glue that down if you did it carefully. But hand stitching is probably the easiest and then you can work to embellish other areas as well. You can add anything to the neckline. Little fabric flowers would be cute. And then she has a little bit of sparkle and then we come back in and you can add a mask or wings, tights, ballet shoes, sparkly flats, anything that you want to really set this off as a full princess look. To make the basic tank top, I'm just gonna show you quickly how we do this with the fold over elastic. This is very similar to the free swimsuit pattern. And like I said, it's in some of the other pattern instructions. So we're just going to take a front and a back. There is no back seam because this is stretchy and the elastic is stretchy. So the fold over elastic dimensions are in the pattern. You're gonna take the fold over elastic which folds in the middle. I'm going to place this over this edge of the fabric and then along that fold line it folds and sandwiches that fabric inside the elastic. So then you'll just go over and sew this with a zigzag stitch to cover the edges of the front and the back. Then I'm gonna simply take the strap pieces and attach them to the front and the back. So I lay that fold over elastic flat. I'm lining up the underarm. I'm stretching it slightly as I fit it to the underarm. There'll be a gap between which goes over the shoulder and then the remainder goes down the back to the underarms. So there you can see that strap is sewn. It's not folded over yet. So I have the raw edge down and I've just zigzagged it. The span across the top is the same on both of the shoulders. So I have it attached to the front and the back and then I'm just going to fold this over starting at the end and then run that through the machine with a zigzag the same as it is on this neckline and then do that right here over the shoulder. So just continue sewing all the way over and then back down the other side just to keep this closed and folded as it goes over the shoulder. And try not to pull this too much while you're stitching it, just so that it has a nice tight fit around her shoulder. And there's a close up look of those shoulder straps sewn. Now we're just going to simply flip this right sides together and sew the side seams, and then we'll continue with the skirt portion of this style princess costume. Now for the pink option, I'm going to show you two different types of skirts. So for this one, because this layer is so sheer, whether you're using mesh, or if you decide to use tulle, which is even more sheer, you're gonna to wanna to have another piece of fabric underneath that is not see-through. So for this one, we've gone ahead and cut a piece of the knit, which is very lightweight, the same color as the bodice. So because this is going to be a lot thicker, we have not cut it 56 inches wide. We have the sheer and the tool both 56 inches wide. They're both five and a half inches in length. But for the knit ruffle, we've gone ahead and just cut this two times the width of the waist. So this is cut at 24 inches if we're working with an 11 or 12 inch waist. So we have this one cut a little bit smaller just to have a little bit less bulk but we have two options again for the top layer. So one will be this really flowy chiffon, which will look very similar to the blue version that we've already done. And then the other version is this more crisp tool. So I'll go ahead and gather those and we can look at how they compare. So here we have at the top the knit layer, which is gathered from 24 inches down to this 11 inch span. And then we have the 56 inch wide version of this sparkly mesh, which is gathered down to the same width. So what I'm gonna do, at this point is take the two of them, stack them on top of each other, and I will just lightly baste these together right along the top edge, and then we're gonna work to attach this to the tank top. All right, so here we have both skirt styles finished and the tank top ready to attach to create the princess dress. So just so we can look at the two styles together, we have one right here. This one is with that mesh that is really soft and flowy, but it has the knit underneath. And then this one is a little bit more stiff 
and that is the tool. It's a little bit more sparkly, but it is more like a tutu than a flowy dress. So for this version, I'm going to take this top one and sew it to this costume. And then for this one, I think what I'll do is just create a simple sash with a piece of ribbon, fold it in half and sew it right along this top edge, but leave it long enough at the ends so that I can just pull it around behind and tie it in a bow and have a little princess tutu that we can add to anything or that can be worn just with a tank top on its own. So to attach this to this, we're gonna do the exact same thing as we've done before, right sides together. I'm just going to start at the center. I'm gonna pin it all the way around, get to center back and match up this and then stitch down my center back seam and then carefully just fit that in and sew that in one complete circle to attach the skirt to the tank top. And there you can see, once we have this one turned right side out, front and back, there's no center back seam on the tank top on this one. So this is the beginning of a princess costume and we have the blue one as well. So these are just two different style tank top tops. You can also do a traditional t-shirt with sleeves or you could choose to do long sleeves or three quarter length sleeves and then add a little bit of a ruffle around that hemline as well just to give it a little bit more frou-frou princess looking detail. And again, you'll wanna come in at this point and then embellish these with trims, with fabric flowers, and then add little bits of other princess accessories, crowns, hats, ballet shoes, sparkly flats, wings, um, all of that would really just put this over the top. But this gives you a basic idea for how to create a princess dress. And you could do this in a variety of colors and styles depending on the colors and fabric choices that you use for both the top and the bottom.